as you can see, I have a huge pot in front of me. I have a ton of chopped up veggies and beautiful ingredients right here. So we're making the mother of all soups. We're making cow heel soup, a Trimbegonian classic. I cannot wait to show you guys this recipe. Let's get started. Here in the Caribbean, we celebrate our rich and diverse heritage every day in every pot. The story of our shared experiences is told in every bite of our favorite dishes. Join us as we explore Caribbean cuisine, where every dish is simply local. So before we jump into this recipe, just a reminder, if you aren't already subscribed to Eat to Food on YouTube, be sure to do so and feel free to give us a like on Facebook and follow us on Instagram as well. Okay, we have this huge pot here. Not only is this a pot, but it's also a pressure cooker. And I highly recommend if you have a pressure cooker, please use this tool when making this soup because we have a lot of um, collagen and bone material to sort of soften up with these uh, cow heels here. And then we also have some cuisine yellow split peas to bruise and it usually happens so much faster in a pressure cooker. It's a very good investment. A lot of Trimigonian dishes are hastened with the use of a pressure cooker. So I'm gonna jump right in and get started. We have a sort of overhead filming scenario here today because I really want you guys to see inside this pot. So I'm going to add some cuisine soybean oil to the pot. So I'm going to add my aromatics first as we do in any Trimbegonian dish. So I'm going to add my onions. And I'm going to let these cook so that they're translucent. And we just give these onions a rough chop because remember everything is going to cook down really well in our soup. Next I'm adding some minced garlic and I bought four cloves of garlic here and mint. And if you guys want to follow along, we have the full recipe in the link provided. So you can get all the exact measurements there. Next we're going to add some chopped pimento and I removed the seeds out of my pimentos just because I don't want it to be too spicy. But if you like pepper, you can surely leave the seeds in. All right, so those are cooking and frying up nicely. I'm going to add my cow heel next. And we have two pounds of cow heel here. And I actually got this from Massey Stores. We gave it a quick wash. And this is all thawed out and ready to go. So I'm going to add it in. I won't dump it in. I'm going to add it in piece by piece. All right, and next. So the cow heel, I find, is either uh, something that people either love or really don't like. I love the kind of, I don't want to sound gross, but I kind of like the nooks and crannies. <laughs> I love pigtail, I love chicken foot, and I love cow heel as well. I like the kind of gelatinous texture that you get and all the flavor and richness that comes from those bones. It's, to me, one of the finer things in life. Oh. So good. So next I have some chopped pumpkin here that we peeled and cut into some pieces. So we're gonna add this in. And already some of the skins of the cow heel is starting to melt. And we're layering these flavors to make the base of our soup. Next we're adding a few sprigs of thyme. This whole thyme is fine, we'll fish it out after. Next, I have a cup of cuisine yellow cookies that I'm just adding to our pot. And then I'm going to add some salt and black pepper. And then I'm going to add the second most important ingredient to our dish, other than cow heel, which is water. So it's just so loud in here and it's really quieted down. <laughs> right, so I'm just gonna kind of make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom of the pot, give it a little stir. So I'm gonna cover the pressure cooker, make sure it's locked in and let this cook for a half an hour. What's gonna happen in the pressure cooker is that these puppies are gonna burst the bones and the skins of the cow heel is gonna soften and it's really gonna start mellowing together. The split, the split piece will thicken up the soup 
and then we're gonna add our veggies and some fresh out of any and we're good to go so it's been a half an hour and i just switched off my stove i have to talk kind of loud because you press the cookers taking up a lot of the noise level here um, but I'm gonna let the pressure subside before I open the pressure cooker and then we're gonna continue our kahu soup Alright everyone, so we carefully removed the lid from the pressure cooker and you wanna really be sure that you let the pressure subside before you take off the lid because then you'll have a huge explosion and it's actually quite dangerous Now we're at a rolling boil and I just added a little bit of salt to the soup. So I'm adding in some dumplings now, and we made these dumplings by mixing flour and water, a little bit of cuisine soybean oil, as well as a pinch of salt. And we just mixed it together, and I kneaded it until it was in a nice smooth ball, and I rolled it out until it looks like one long log, and I just cut it into small pieces and added it straight into the pot. So we chopped up some potato here and we're gonna add it in. There we go. Make sure that's evenly distributed. And you see, the soup is now starting to kind of beef up a bit. No pun intended. So we have our dumplings and potatoes in here and we're gonna let these cook first a bit. And then lastly, we're gonna add our carrots in. We don't want to put the carrots in right away because we want them to have a bit of a bite still. We don't want them to be overcooked and mushy in the soup. So I almost forgot the most important ingredient and that is the hot pepper. So I'm just gonna let it sit there for the last couple of minutes of cooking just to get that last bit of flavor. Okay, so our potatoes and dumplings have been boiling for a couple of minutes. So now we're gonna add our carrots in. Give it that last pop of color and that last bit of sweetness. I'm just gonna mix this right in. And I'm not gonna lie to you all, I feel like I'm on the savanna right now. <laughs> so we're gonna let this cook for another five minutes or so until the vegetables are nice and soft and tender. And then it's gonna be eating time. All right, everyone, all our ingredients in except our shadow Benny. Bless it with that chunny flavoring. Mm -mm. I like to add the shot up in the end so that it kind of gives it a nice bright color. There you go. So I'm gonna turn off my flame. And I have my hot pepper to fish out right here. Put this on the side. There you go. And uh, you guessed it, it's tasting time. So I have my ladle and my very nice, deep, huge mug. Just gonna give myself a nice, healthy serving. Make sure I got some dumpling, make sure I got my nice piece of cow heel. The cow heel looks like it's melted into the soup. And you can see all the green from the shadow penny. Guys, you saw how easy that was. We have a full meal classic chunny dish now it's time to taste all right it's the moment of truth y'all tasting time mm. <clears throat> love me some cargo soup mm. so i'm just gonna try to take the most graceful bite out of this cow heel that has ever been recorded on YouTube history. So let's go. <laughs> so let's try this cow heel now. So good. That was a genuine reaction. I love cow heel. For those who love cow heel, if you know, you know. It's just melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, and it adds such a nice flavor to the soup. It adds a thickness to the soup and it adds a fattiness to the soup that's just so warm and comforting. If you're a cow heel soup fan, you gotta try this one. All right, guys, let me just chew this dumpling real quick. Mm, so good. All right, y'all. So it tastes like Saturday afternoon in this bowl right here. So good. 
and just a special thanks to our sponsors Cuisine for making this video happen. Cuisine products can be found in all Massey stores nationwide. So I'm gonna get on with this soup y'all. Until next time, it's always a pleasure having you in the kitchen with me and I will see you again. Bye.